and how can we be carry on with this uh, further. So, um, and I'm going also to read from my, uh, from my notes, uh, my remarks. Um, then it will, I will follow with a PowerPoint presentation so that I can really put some experiences down to you. And then later on, I hope to have a time. So if you have any questions, you can ask me. It's a great <coughs> honor for me to be with you today to share my remarks at this promising annual undertaking alongside distinguished speakers and to have the opportunity to share some of my thoughts. My remarks are largely confined to the foundations and concepts of volunteerism and voluntary work from a global perspective, delineating constructive experiences, challenges, and lessons learned to this region. I am delighted indeed at this, as this is particularly fitting for me uh, to address you, the youth being the most important cluster of our societies globally, yet especially in this region where the youth represent above 32% of the population, it is also important to know that we are gathered rightly at the most esteemed results-based education entity in the region that is perfectly qualified to host well-equipped to nurture our promising findings from this forum uh, and to fly high with it to new youth volunteering horizons within the region and beyond. Certainly the key coordinates of our subject built on first knowledge, education, youth and volunteerism, which meet here today. In all our discussions, these four pillars meet today to convert and to move forward to realize outstanding results, exactly as Qatar itself has shown remarkable achievements across the development spectrum, evident in the UNDP Human Development Report for 2018. If you know this report, I think this is one of the most important reports that are produced today annually by the United Nations Development Program. So I would really advise you to look at this report and refer to it in your development discussions. Um, Qatar ranked 37 out of the global um, human development index list, and Qatar measured 86 percent, that is 0.865 percent, out of the world's total list of 189 countries, and maybe close to 200 countries globally, Qatar ranked 37. But I'm not mentioning this to brag or polish Qatar's outstanding achievements. This is not the place for it, actually. But to state that with confidence that if and only if we count on sparkling dreams that we have to come true, it should be planted here. I strongly believe so. So it is safe for us to dream and roll up and roll up our sleeves to realize under the umbrella of the University of Qatar the nucleus for a promising partnership among the represented universities in this forum that culminates into a university volunteer youth volunteering round table. I'm calling for having a round table among the universities here who are participating to create the nucleus for a future roundtable that these universities can meet every year, and then uh, carry on with that, uh, with the aim to promote university youth volunteering, network among the roundtable partners, facilitate new and innovative undertakings, and recognize the university youth volunteer outstanding achievements to be further replicated among the roundtable members. Such an aim gives us the energy and hope to build on it and on the power of youth volunteering for the well-being of present and future university generations and our societies at large. I would like to commend the organizers for their foresight in convening this forum to reflect on the concepts underlying volunteerism for peace and development in the specific context of the young people and the important role these concepts can play in helping to achieve lasting peace and development.
coming at today's critical juncture in the history of the region, where the challenges for peace and development reach their peak. Yet the prospects indicate a promising grounding stage, not only in Qatar, but in many corners of the region. This very fact makes it even more timely, exciting, and inspiring. In so doing, your efforts to nurture youth volunteerism demonstrate your resolve to take a powerful development resource that is all too often ignored. Seriously, as was clearly reflected in the first state of the world's volunteerism report, and this is the second report I would like to stand on and advise you to look at it in the internet. I mean, you can Google it and you can find it. It's called State of the World's Volunteerism Report. It's a very important report, and I'm going to talk a little bit about it in detail. Well, if I quote from the first State of the World's Volunteerism Report, it says it is about the people themselves who, through voluntary action, can become active development actors rather than passive development recipients. Hence, the core of my message today is that youth volunteerism is precisely such an asset, an asset that is insufficiently recognized as a key strategic resource for development in all regions of our world. An asset that every country and every nation today, no matter how developed or poor, can count on. There is a wealth of goodwill, solidarity, knowledge, and social um, solidarity and social networks that can be tapped into um, local communities. Yet, it is all about our conviction and capacity to cooperate to get things done. It is also about our conviction and capacity to organize and build a structured approach to volunteerism. And here also I would like to stop for a minute and to tell you that why we have magnificent volunteering efforts globally, especially in this region, what we lack, I believe, is a structured approach to volunteering. And I'll talk also more about how do we move from uh, uh, random volunteering effort into a structured approach to volunteering. Uh, to get things done, I mean, it's also about our conviction and capacity to organize and build a structured approach to volunteerism that existed and will continue to exist as long as humanity exists. So I wish, therefore, to recap the four pillars I mentioned earlier as the foundation of a structured approach to an effective volunteering, which are, I mentioned before, promoting volunteerism is a, one of the four pillars, facilitating the role for volunteers and volunteer involvement organizations, recognizing volunteers for their efforts and networking among the volunteer organizations. Among the university youth volunteers and volunteer involvement organizations, it is my belief that we should collaborate to attain these goals for a lasting peace and development. Let us be inspired by that volunteerism is not just a theoretical concept. It is a life and powerful force for economic and social development, for solidarity and reciprocity that benefits society at large, engage communities and individual volunteers. It is also about human potential, striving and achievements. It is about participation, inclusion and citizenship. And I'm confident that our zest for these concepts, fruition will go a long way in discovering and mobilizing the potential of that ethical development asset surrounding Afrochis volunteerism. In the Arabic language and cultural norm, expressions of volunteerism are articulated in rich meanings such as toe. I don't know if some of you heard of it, but in, in Palestine they call it toe um, or, or tawa. Um, also, in some of the Sham countries, they call it One, or in the Middle East and East Africa, it's also called Nafir. And in the West uh, uh, part of the Arab region, in the, north, um, the northern part of the, of the African region, or the Maghreb countries, they call it Tweeza. The point is, regardless, or as commonly, it's commonly used in the African north countries, of, of, uh, I mean, in, in the Maghreb countries. Now, regardless of what we call it, 
you would concur that we need to come up with an agreed approach to measuring volunteering. Further to the reference made by Dr. Hassan bin Rashid Adirham at his welcome speech regarding the large numbers of volunteer involving organizations in the US, France, or Israel, I would like to go a bit further on this rationale by raising the critical enigma of measuring the economic value of volunteering and its impact on the GMP, the growth national product of the countries for each country. A factor that will notably impact present human development index ranking, for instance. I mentioned before that Qatar ranked this year for 2018, 37 out of 189 countries. But if you can imagine that, we add a new factor to the human development index, which is volunteerism, would that help to raise or level up the ranking now Qatar has, or any other country, if you can imagine by adding the volunteering as an element in a formula that we calculate to come up with the ranking of these countries in terms of development. So definitely it will have an impact. A related and equally disputable issue is should volunteers be paid? This is a question that comes quite often. Should we pay volunteers for that effort or not? Uh, and mind you here, I'm not talking about uh, whether volunteers should be rewarded. I'm saying that should volunteers be paid. So um, that's not basically the question whether the volunteers should be rewarded or not. Volunteers should be rewarded, but should they be paid? That's the question I'm leaving for you to think of, and then maybe you can discuss. Is volunteering free of charge? Does it come free of charge? Does, does it come with no cost for the organizations that are carrying out the volunteer efforts? If so, how can it be sustainable? If, are not, if we are not putting costs against the volunteering efforts, so how can we sustain it? How can we ensure that volunteering will carry on? Uh, my aim here is to plant a set of probing questions and ideals surrounding the concepts underlying volunteerism for you, the youth, to research, analyze, and try to give sounding answers as they remain largely unanswered today. I worked for the United Nations for close to 28 years and especially for the United Nations volunteers for 18 years or so. And yet, I believe that these questions remain unanswered. This is why I'm advising you, encouraging you to research about it, and also encourage the university to look for carrying further these concepts. My personal take in this is that volunteers should indeed be paid an allowance to ensure that they are decently transported, accommodated, medically covered, etc., while they deliver their voluntary services. However, volunteers should not be rewarded financially for their technical services, or transfer of know-how, or responding to shortages of development workers, which justify the volunteerism effortly. Following the International Year of Volunteers in 2001, leading countries such as Canada, UK, France, and Germany, and a few other carried out serious research attempts towards measuring volunteering in collaboration with lead universities and research centers like John Hopkins University. All these efforts remain to be a drop in the ocean. But at that time, I remember in 2002, 2003, uh, countries like Canada measured their volunteering effort and they economically, they valued it at the level of close to 8% of the uh, income of the countries, which is huge. It's a, it's, a, it's a large amount actually for countries like Canada. So, should we go by measuring volunteering in terms of economic values or not? Should we find out how much volunteering uh, uh, value in terms of costs? To create a favorable, favorable environment for a structured approach to volunteering, more attention should be given to research, initiating legislations, and here I also want to underline the word legislation. Unfortunately, in all this region in the Arab states, we do not have as yet legislations that control and help in pushing the agenda of volunteerism forward. 
We need to come up with legislations. We need to come up with laws through our parliaments. This is something that needs to be worked and why many countries in other regions have gone far on, on, on the same approach. So research, initiating legislations, promotion, training, and building specialized volunteer management centers that have the capacity to analyze, document, and report the many contributions and successes of volunteering for development and peace in the Arab region. On this paradigm, we are unfortunately lagging far behind other regions today to gain a seat at the global effort to promote, facilitate, network, and recognize. And these are the four pillars I mentioned before. We need to ensure our seat by working in these four pillars. The ethos of volunteerism for peace and development, we need to redefine volunteering, charity, and human assistance. And here, let me say that we have, especially in this region, unlike other regions, we have a bit of a mix in our definitions and concept of what, what, what volunteerism is, what charity is, and what human assistance is. These are, I think we call it in Arabic, uh, uh, charity, we call it al amal al-khayri, and um, humanitarian assistance, we call it, uh, we, we call it al amal al insan There are three concepts. In my mind, this concept, these three concepts, are largely mixed, and I think that is from our teaching, from our, I think it also has some um, elements of uh, how, I mean, we reach to this, when we talk about volunteering, we do not say, we do not mean that you leave your village or city to go to another city or village to help the people who are in need. We don't mean that. When we say volunteering, it means also that you put your hand in pocket and then you pay some money to someone, while this concept or this act in other regions, it's not called volunteering, it's called charity, for instance. So we have a bit of a mix on these three dimensions. And the second element is to entice our lead universities and research centers, such as our esteemed host, to decisively engage with the challenges shared to implant the Arabic principles and values of volunteerism stemming from the, its history, culture, and religion teachings to help shaping and refining the global principles which are not perfectly perfect either. My plea here is to stimulate lead universities to direct a good sum of their research towards volunteerism. The round table idea needs to be enriched with active players, donors, civil society, development corporations, private sector, media, and academia, to name a few. So there is no way but forward. Putting our efforts toward the top I'm sure will contribute significantly to raising awareness on the critical atoms youth volunteering make to the development of their people and the sound role volunteers can play globally if adequately supported. Hence, we can move the peace and development agenda in the right direction. I consider myself not a foreigner to this country and its dear people. To the contrary, I am very closely associated with Qatar not because I'm Sudanese by birth, but because A, that I had the privilege of launching together with His Excellency Dr. Hamad Abdelaziz al Khwari, the then Minister of uh, Culture, Arts, and Heritage, the first ever Arabic version of the State of the World's Volunteers in Report in 2011, issued in 2011, but the launch was in Doha, uh, on May 5th, 2012. And I had worked and managed the UNP program for the Arab states over 15 years, the Caribbean region for two years, and South and East Asia for some three years. Therefore, I strong, strongly feel for the people and their culture too. This is why I feel committed and I'm part of your efforts too. It was apparent to me since my early years at Athens University when I was captivated by the ancient Greek mathematics and philosophy, I was dreaming to become a mathematician and philosopher myself. Then moved into arithmetic analysis and computer programming soon after. However, not pursuing that path long enough either, I ended up managing these UMD programs from Bonn, Germany until last October 2017. So I could only attribute my deviation uh, to the power of ethos values and ideas that volunteerism effort. 
In conclusion, I believe that if all the commitment, energy, and inspiration in this forum are true representatives of what together we can offer, which I believe to be the case, just imagine what can be achieved. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Now I move into a PowerPoint presentation to share with you some of. Uh, Oh, I can get it here easy. Okay. So I guess this is the presentation. <coughs> or I'm going to here to talk about practical things that we have gone through regarding what I just spoke about a little bit on. I touched base actually a little bit on these elements when we speak about, uh, okay. So, the, um, on, on this first page, and before I go into any details, I'm just going to focus on two elements. The first element, which is the State of the World's Volunteerism Report, or reports, 2011, 2015, and 2018. Every three years, uh, the United Nations Volunteers Program has been um, uh, requested by the General Assembly to issue this report every three years, which discusses the, um, uh, I mean, the, the status of volunteering globally. And this is why I believe it's very important for researchers, it's very important for reference as well, if you want to go to a specific reference, where volunteerism stands at any point in time. And here I'm giving you also the link I hope that will be part of the handouts, uh, that you can really get the link from there, for the three State of the World Volunteerism Reports. And I'm also going to talk about the Arab Volunteering for a Better Future program. This project, I will speak about in a little while. Volunteer volunteerism was organized as an important factor in development at the end of the International Year of Volunteers. I mentioned it was in 2001, when 126 members uh, member states sponsored the United Nations General Assembly resolution. The resolution provided numerous of policy recommendations, and this is why I think it's important to look at this report, and also address some specific tasks to the governments, United Nations organizations, NGOs, private sector education and research entities, media, academia, just to name a few, on the ways to promote and support volunteerism. So we have the agenda from the General Assembly to move on with promoting and uh, facilitating volunteerism. The General Assembly managed, uh, mandated UNV to develop the, uh, an inclusive global state of the world volunteering report. And the first one was launched 10 years after the International Year of Volunteers 2001, which means it was launched in 2011. Um, the General Assembly session, the state of, I mean, for the State of the World Volunteers Forum, was endorsed by 80 countries. The State of the World Volunteering Report promotes better understanding on the four pillars I mentioned earlier in my uh, speech, uh, which are recognition, promotion, facilitation, and networking uh, for a structured approach to volunteering that we need to really focus on. Um, it, it, uh, volunteerism forms um, of expression may vary. I mentioned a few from the Arab experiences. Uh, the report represents the starting point for a broader debate, not definitive answer. It doesn't give any answers actually, but rather it opens uh, points for discussion to carry on further. And especially I'm addressing you here as the youth universities, um, uh, the university youth volunteering, uh, and those who are involved of you in some social and volunteering uh, uh, studies, it would be very important for you to look at, uh, at these reports. So, the first one, I will give you some elements of what was the first state of the world for this report. It was called Universal Values for Global Talks for Global Wellbeing. And meaning like volunteering from global perspective. How does it look like? And that was the first initiative we did. We translated this report in 2012, and then as I mentioned before, it was launched in Doha 
for the Arab Union, for all the Arab nations. The first SWVR promotes a better understanding of volunteers in global trends and was translated to French, Spanish, and Arabic. The, by the way, the United Nations languages have five main languages, and the rest of languages considered to be a secondary, and these are English, French, Spanish, Arabic, and Russian. So these are the five languages. Later on, they add the, the uh, sorry, and the Chinese. Later on, they add the Russian language, and now the report, the state of the world voluntary report, is even translated in other languages like Turkish, like uh, 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 some Latin uh, uh, languages. I mean, like uh, uh, Portuguese. Sorry. Portuguese. Portuguese, exactly. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Thank you. So uh, the report demonstrates the, the universality, scope, and reach of volunteerism along with new trends and volunteering modalities in the 21st century. It examines important contributions in diverse fields, and it suggests how volunteerism can be taken forward. It also provides a better and involved society. The second report, which was launched in 2015, was called Transforming Governance. And also we launched the second report from Al Manama from Bahrain, uh, again in 2015. So uh, I would also call on you to look at this report, uh, if you wish a detail, but there is an executive summary of the report you can have. You're going to have like, just a quick look at it. Uh, it draws on the evidence from diverse countries, as Brazil, Kenya, we will get some examples from there. It shows how ordinary people volunteer their time, energies, and skills to improve the way they are governed and engaged at local and national and global levels. So basically, it, the second report um, uh, encourages uh, countries to go on the national volunteering element, more than having international volunteering. More than 1 billion people volunteer globally, um, and uh, while well, many governments work quite accountable and responsive to their citizens, they work with government, civil society, and call those in power to account to represent the voiceless and left out of decision making. What I can say about this second report is that it encourages people not to distance themselves from taking officials accountable in not supporting. Uh, the society's through volunteering efforts. The third report, which was launched, by the way, last week in Cairo, I mean, the Arabic version of it was launched in Cairo, the last report, but every report of these reports in English, French, and Spanish is launched every year on the 5th of December, uh, sorry, every three years it is on the 5th of December in New York. But the Arabic version, they come before, uh, so after the translation. So it was launched last week, I think, on 21st October, um, on the occasion of the United Nations Day. So it was launched from the Arabic nation. And it's called The Thread That Binds Us. Um, the report presents new evidence on the role of volunteerism in strengthening community resilience. It explores how governments and development actors can best engage with volunteerism nature its most beneficial characteristics while mitigating against potential harms to the most vulnerable. Uh, it, conf it confirms local volunteering is a, the fundamental coping strategy for that, and uh, in fragile and uh, turbulent world, volunteers are active in every major shock and stress experiences by communities. And here you see people they get together and they move naturally by their instinct to support others. And for that, definitely volunteers will be always the front, the front line. Um, I would like also to shed light on a report um, which you see in front of you here. It's called the Arab Youth Volunteering for a Better Future. This, this program um, was piloted in five countries, Egypt, uh, Jordan, Morocco, Tunisia, and Yemen. And that was the idea of this program was to help the Arab youth to stand up and then get engaged in 
the development or decision making be there as part of their societies or the lead of their societies. So uh, it was piloted there from 2012 to 2015. The project ended by end of 2015. And the idea was to take the project and then generalize it and spread it out, expand it into all the Arab countries. This did not work though, um, because of all the turbulent um, uh, things that happened afterwards, you know, I mean all about what happened in the Arab region. But uh, the idea was to, um, to help the Arab youth to be part of each um, uh, board of directors, for instance, of country, of companies, of, of, of uh, institutions, corporations, to be part of this seminar. We have to help them to get there. So that was the idea of this program. And it was piloted in these five countries. I'll show you some uh, extracts from the videos, and then they talk about themselves more than me speaking about it. Um, the, uh, we did evaluation for this, week, for this project in uh, 2016, and these are some of the findings. 2,391 youth reached through pilot activities, limited baseline data and process indicators, challenges in measuring the impact. We have faced challenges in measuring the impact of the activities carried out by this project. We have other challenges like staff turnover, limited transport, these are mainly internal to the project. Non-urban reach, I mean, it was criticized for not reaching the people who are in villages or engaging the people, the youth who are in villages. Rather, it was concentrating on the urban uh, cities. Established partnerships and reputation signifies potential to create the impact of maintaining at the national grassroots level. Here we have um, five videos, but I'm not going to show them. I don't know how time is. Uh, someone can tell me because I think we have an hour for this. But anyway, I will show you some of them, and if we pass on time, I can leave these links behind so that you can go and see them on YouTube. They are actually present on YouTube. So let me show you the first one from Egypt, and I hope we have also the uh, speakers. Okay. في هنا خالص مدرسين لان كله بيتجوز بدري 14 سنه وبيخلف بدري 16 فما فيش مدرسين موجودين في في العلم نفسها. انا كنت بلف بالعجله فطبعا اصلا قبل ما اقول ان انا يعني قبل ما اطلع مجرد بس ان انا قلت ان انا هعمل ده طبعا بقى في قضيه انت هتعمل حاجه طويله وبدون مقابل مادي وفي نفس الوقت بتلف العجلة مصر واخدة ترتيب رقم 148 من حيث جودة التعليم على مستوى العالم فما في بلد يعني عاوزة تنهض أو تتقدم وهي يعني حوالي نص شعبها ما بيعرفش يقرا ويكتب التكنولوجيا بالنسبه لنا مش الهدف، التكنولوجيا بالنسبه لنا هي الوسيله، الهدف بالنسبه لنا التعليم، المنظومه بتاعت التعليم، فبس بنستخدم التكنولوجيا في ان احنا نعلم الناس بطريقه صح. انا متطوع في صناعه الحياه من شهر 7 2011 وبعدين في شهر 9 كانت انطلاقه مشروع العلم قوة في ثمان محافظات منهم المنيا، الفكره كانت ان بصينا لقينا الاتحاديات او المشاكل اللي موجوده في مصر كثيره جدا. بس لقينا على راسها المحو الامي يعني او مساله الامي في مصر شفنا التغيير بعينينا شفنا الناس وهم فرحانين وهم بيستلموا الشهاده شفنا الناس وهم بيكتبوا وبيقروا شفنا الام وهي بتذاكر لاولادها انا بعد الجامعه بعد ما خلصت انا اصلا كنت صيدله وما كنتش عايزه حابه اشتغل في المجال ده 
وبدات كنت عايزه اكتشف في مجالات ايه ثانيه فبدات اتطوع في حتت كثيره مختلفه ومجالات مختلفه ولقيت ان الحاجه اللي شداني هي التعليم انا دي كانت اول مدرسه الاقي ان العيال بتيجي هنا بتجري يعني جايه الصبح يبقى نايمه الساعه 6 الاقي عيال جايه تجري وعايزين يتعلموا يعني يجوا يخبطوا عليا انا عايزه اكتب انا عايزه اكتب فحب التعليم وحب ان هم معرفه ده ان هم بييجوا المدرسه وهم عايزين مش هم خايفين هو ده اعتقد الاضافه اللي بيضيفوا المتطوعين اللي بيجوا هنا يعني الجائزه دي ما بصيتهاش على انها جائزه للمحبوب هي الجائزه لكل متطوع جائزه لكل واحد عمل في يوم حاجه علشان الناس سواء في العلم هو حتى او في طبعا يعني جايزه من من كيان كبير فكانت مشجعه ان انا اكمل في اللي بدات فرصه ان انتوا عندكم وقت ومجهود تقدروا ان انتوا تطلعوها في حاجه تفيد المجتمع وتفيدكم انتوا نفسكم تطوع هيخليك فعلا سابق سنك وتفكر من كده So if you finish and I'll show another one and then we will move very quickly for questions if you have. Um, Singapore's Pantena is the second largest in كان ده الطرف عنده حماس كبير جدا انه هو نفذ الفكره هاي من خلال العابها اللي احنا نوصلها للطلاب كنا نوصلهم فكره مبادره عمل التدريب مرحبا عمو احنا فريق عمل تطوعي حابين بس نساعدك اليوم نوقف مكانك في الدور بلشنا فيها زي هيك انه احنا بس نوقف مكانه في الدور فصوت يجي صارت الناس تعرفنا صار مثلا دور مرضى طويل يصيروا هم يجوا اه خذ من هذاك هو بعطيك هو بوقف مكانك على وانت استريح هو هو جاي اليوم يساعد فانت اجيت بيساعد زمن يمكن ساعدته فيها انت رجعت له عمل جديد قررنا نعمل حمله اسمها صار وقتها لانه اجى الوقت اللي ناخذ فيه حقوقنا واجى الوقت اللي تتوفر فيه التسهيلات البيئيه انا مسؤوله كشخص حتى لو عندي اعاقه بس انا رح اطلع من الجامعه رح يكون في ناس وراي بدهم هاد التسهيلات البيئيه فقررت اكون متطوعه صار في 20 دوله مياه مهيئه صار في 3 متر جنب طيب آه انا يعني كان ودي انا اعطيكم انا خمس فيديوز 
this is the cream of uh, what we can say the university youth volunteering efforts. That was made by the United Nations in that region for five pilot countries over three years. So it was quite successful and the evaluation was quite um, uh, recommending. So my personal commitment to this program was to really expand throughout the uh, countries to talk about the different countries in the region, but unfortunately and from um, uh, questions we have at the government of education. So I would like to end my presentation here. And uh, I thank you very, very much for listening uh, to me. And uh, I will give the room for some questions if you have.